Hi guys, it's David from Automotive Press, live from Japan Mobility Show in Tokyo. And it's the first time we actually get to see the all new CX-5 in person. We've seen it being revealed virtually, but this is when we finally get to see it. And I just had a whole presentation done by both the chief designer and the chief engineer. They explained everything in terms of why the CX-5 is such a substantial and significant model, not just for Mazda, but for this market because it's got some really class-leading design and engineering things that they've done that I am truly impressed. Now, you guys already know I love Mazda products in general because of the fact that they drive so differently from all the other Japanese or even non-Japanese brands. They're the only one that really spend time making the driving dynamics and driving characters unique and different from the likes of RAV4 and CRVs. They think should drive like a European car, just like the current Model CX-5. But let me do a quick walk around since we have the car in front of us right here at the Japan Mobility Show. Let me explain to you some of the really important changes that are not obvious in the press release, not obvious in the virtual reveal, but when I show it to you, you guys will know what I mean. So just walk with me here. And so you guys already know the front design is evolved to this kind of design, still very much recognizable as a CX-5 design, very much a master design, but you've got central headlight here, they call a central headlight, the primary headlight in case behind the kind of ladder design, tier design, so this is kind of very unique to the new Mazda CX-5. You get a little bit more of a bolder design, but also more classic design. You still get a very classic Mazda look and feel, so you know this is a Mazda from you know, many, many feet away, many meters away. And then, um, well, obviously this is a pre-production of prototypes. So I'm not gonna measure the gap because that wouldn't be quite fair, but just looking at it, I always talked about how great Mazda's engineering and production capacity and capability is. And you can look at it, just a perfect line. I mean, <laughs> this is better than some of the Lexus models out there, at least for this pre-production model right now. So it is longer, it's quite a bit longer, and the wheelbase is also longer, but what the, the chief engineer said is that the overhangs in front of the front wheels and the rear overhang after the rear wheels are the same amount that sticks out compared to the current model because the wheelbase got stretched out. So basically, if you imagine the body that's been stretched out, but the wheelbase also stretched out, and so they maximize the interior space, and that's a very important point because they made this opening quite a bit bigger in the back. And maybe that was one of the weaknesses of the current CX-5. The rear spacing was always a little bit tight and not the most comfortable. But now they really made substantial changes. This opening is bigger. They moved the hip points all the way back. I think she said 17 millimeters. So if you, when you step on the rear seat here, I can step in easily and also just slip right out. It's very easy. The height is also bigger and this has been pushed back. So not only is the opening much bigger, but also the leg room, the headroom, it's also a little bit higher. Everything is substantially more comfortable and better inside. You can, you can just take a look at it. You know, they, they don't, we don't have all the dimensions yet, but uh, when I sit on it, I know for a fact that this is now getting closer and closer to some of the larger Competitors more like a Highlander size now than before, so it's getting bigger. And you can tell the interior has been improved as well. We'll come back in a second on that one. You still get the zebra effect. You guys know I talk about that quite a bit because only Mazda products have this kind of thing built in in terms of engineering and manufacturing so that you get this nice zebra effect, like a little lines that go through and it kind of loops around here and the zebra effect carries on here. And it's not as noticeable as CX-70 or 90 series, but it's still there. And uh, you know, this kind of very flat looking all the way from front to back, looking like a solid piece of steel. I'm telling you right now that very few car companies in the world can have that kind of engineering and manufacturing capability because it takes so much effort to get it so perfect. Of course, the paint job looks great. This is that tri-coat paint that they have from Mazda and it's got amazing, brilliant paint. Also, they talked a lot about the back end over here. So maybe you actually come back on this side and they talked about how this is still very much a CX-5 look and feel. You know, this very 
muscular look, but they've strengthened it. First of all, it's all blacked out also, but this part here has been strengthened and it's evolved to something a little bit different. Still CX-5 look and feel, but it's got a bit of a more muscular shoulder to it is what, how they explained to me. And they even have like a little bit of a design theme here and here and this is kind of mimicking Japanese wood blocks, like almost like a puzzle, not crossword puzzle, but puzzle. And it's interlocking blocks. So this kind of signals upper body and lower body interlocking with each other, this part as well. So that also gives it a bit of a muscular feel. A lot of design changes in the back. Again, you've got this interesting integrated design. This part is stretched out to give you a bit more character. It looks like more like a Lexus Infinity Acura level of quality and look and feel. The Mazda word is spelled out. And if you open here, uh, the chief engineer also explained to us that the opening is bigger. They don't have the exact dimension for us right now, but this is bigger, taller, wider, much longer. And you can see these lines come straight down. It's not so flared up, but it's coming straight down because it's almost a full rectangle opening. You get a compact spare tire for North American market. And if you fall down the seat, which I may or may not have time to do that right now. Yeah, there you go. This length is also very long. I, I'm going to just go over there to fold it properly here. And this, this length is long enough for someone to actually sleep up to 190 centimeter. I think he said from here back of the first row of seat over all the way to the back of that. And uh, so if you actually take this, this headrest and flip it upside down, so it's facing upward, it can be used as a pillow and you can kind of use this as a bed because it's all flat. you got a much bigger panoramic roof as well. So he was joking that, that you can lie down here and look at the sky. Also keep in mind that the lift height is also lower. I think it's a 19 millimeter. So uh, it's a little bit lower here as well. So that gives you full opening, much more practical than before. I don't know if I'm allowed to open this. I guess I am. So this is still, oh, so you can store your um, ca cargo cover here as well. Again, there'll be a proper compact spare for the North American market. And then uh, maybe you can go, we can go inside. So maybe we can bring the camera up to the other side. I'll open the door from the other side as well by hopping and I'll just give you some brief explanation what's going on. And of course, the most important thing about the interior is that there's a radical change. You guys all know Mazda loves the rotary dial for functionality. They removed that, obviously, but they also removed some of the main buttons that we had. So there's no buttons or dials for temperature or audio. However, the chief engineer was very, very confident and he explained to me why this transition is going to be fine. In fact, he said why this transition is even better than the previous model. So a couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, the uh, temperature and HVAC control here does not disappear when you play around with the screen. So I can't quite do that right now as a prototype. But anyway, this part stays. So you don't have to worry about this one disappearing and you have to look into it into the menu. Also, if I hold it like this, I can move left and right. See that? And, or I can move it here. And so very intuitive, it's not slow. There's no delay. I can also just push this way. And for the first time, because I'm playing with it now and I have been for the last little while, I can tell you that this system is actually really good. It's not one of those fakey things where you push and you feel a little bit of a haptic um, feedback. No, no, it's just straight touch panel and I can do this. I can also change the fan here like this. Very quick, very easy, very responsive. So as far as HVAC or he heating, ventilation, air conditioning, we call it, those controls are totally fine. You can also just go like this and then brings the whole menu up. But also, all the other controls are in the steering wheel, which is completely designed. You got the master board spelled out. And unlike other manufacturers, these are not touch control. These are actually physical things you're pressing and the whole thing actually clicks. And so you got audio control here. In fact, full audio control, volume and skip and move and so forth. And then also cruise control as well. And, and you can also use uh, a voice control. So this is much bigger than what I see in other manufacturers. It's got a nice tactile feel to it. 
it's easy to use and he said that it's easier to use here because your eye is still facing forward than it is to try to fiddle with buttons over here. So he, he claims that this is actually a better system and much faster system because this whole thing is now based on Google system. And it's not based on Toyota's Arena system, by the way. It is a Google system. It's extremely responsive and I find it very easy to use. I'll go to home button here. So right now, as far as I can tell, navigating audio seems very easy. I, I still feel like I wanted a little volume control here, but who knows, that's something that they claim uh, is not necessary. But perhaps if, if enough of you guys complain, maybe they'll add the buttons down the road. You got your start stop button, which is not interrupted by the steering. I can see it through this loop here, so that's okay. You got a full digital instrumentation. And he said that uh, the word master is spelled out partly because you want to see the horizontal lines. It kind of follows all the other lines. And so when you're maneuvering or when you're moving around, you can kind of tell if something is not quite synchronized. And that way I can see the horizontal line here. I can see the horizontal line here. It makes it easier for you to know exactly where you are. They kept the shifter, normal shifter. Thankful for that. I really like it because they said this shifter feels important for Mazda. It's part of a driving dynamics, part of a driving feel. So they kept that traditional shifter design. So I'm really thankful for that. Nice deep cup holders, wireless pad over there, electric parking brake, of course. Sorry, wireless pad is actually over here. Sorry about that. So I made a little mistake on that. Uh, and a small, but quite deep in terms of center console. Uh, and what about the, this one here, glove compartment? It's also two tiered. And it's a little bit smaller than what I like to see, but not all that different from any other brand. Nice stitching here, nice two-tone paint, and really quite comfortable seat. Like based on, you know, short time I, I am sitting on here, it's very, very comfortable. And also everything is kind of soft touch, very high quality. Actually, this is hard plastic, but it looks like a soft plastic when I first looked at it. But actually, at least in this pre-production model, it is hard plastic, but all soft here and everything else is also soft. No glossy black trim. So these are kind of matte black. So I'm really glad they didn't put glossy black. It looks beautiful. The roof again is really wide. The panel room is really wide. And you got, again, a lots of room compared to before. So really beautiful. And I think you guys already know that um, initially there, there'll be only one engine, which is 2.5 liter engine, naturally aspirated, it's not turbo. In other markets, like in Europe, they will have a mild hybrid to go with a 2.5 liter engine. But in North American market, it's only naturally aspirated, no mild hybrid. But there will be a year later, they will introduce also a full hybrid system, which is their own system, not based on Toyota system. So they will also have that. And so I did ask about turbo model. They said actually the market share for turbo is very small and they feel that the hybrid system that's coming later will take over from the turbo market that they have. So it's gonna be naturally aspirated 2.5, then a new hybrid system. A new hybrid system is going to take the place of what turbo used to be. And I did also ask, can we not get the mild hybrid with a 2.5 naturally aspirated engine? And they said that uh, CX-5 owners like all natural engine. They don't want any kind of hybrid. They, they like standard engine. They love this engine the way it is, so they don't want to put the mild hybrid. Uh, but again, these things are, you know, subject to change as the world evolves and as, a, as the car industry evolves, they may have to change. I, I did ask about whether there will be a plug-in hybrid model down the road. He couldn't say anything. I asked, is it possible? Is it potentially available? And he kind of smiled, which tells me that it is possible, but not in the, not in the works in the next, next short while because if they're going to focus on the naturally aspirated engine, then the hybrid, and they're really focusing on launching this as a proper competitor to Honda CRV and RAV4, which is also all new, as you guys know. And for the first time, we have a very capable vehicle that can go against these uh, big players because it's roomy now and you don't have a problem with the space anymore. And if the history proves itself, then the CX-5 will st still drive much more sporty than other competitors. Of course, none of us have driven it and we're not gonna get to drive it until next year, but presumably it will have the Mazda DNA and will have a good steering feel fun to drive character, very agile. He said it was going to be very, very agile, he said to me. And that is a big difference between CX-5s and other competitors such as Honda CRV and RAV4. They're all nice vehicles, but they're not fun to drive. This one should be fun to drive. So a lot more to tell you down the road with CX-5. I love it so far. And this should really, really be a very high volume seller for Mazda. 
long history with CX-5 and so far it's looking great. If you got a question, please let me know. If you haven't done so yet, would you give me a thumbs up and also subscribe um, because many of you guys watch my videos but are not subscribers. Give you the full story from Japan, more to come.